Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be doing a vacation getting ready with me. I just showered, which is why my hair is sopping wet. And I'm uh, going to put my makeup on for the day as I get ready. So you'll have to excuse if the audio is not as good as it normally is. I don't have a microphone or anything here on vacation uh, with me. But I wanted to do a full getting ready with me, including my hair, because you guys have seen on Instagram if you're following me there, that I've been wearing my hair in its natural curly kind of state. And uh, many of you are wanting to know how I achieve that look while I'm down south. So I'm currently in Hilton Head Island in South Carolina, which is my favorite place to be. I've been coming down here since I was three or four with my family. And now Sean and I also venture here together for our vacations as well. It's just the best place on the planet. <laughs> okay, so to start off with my hair, because that's what I always address first when I'm away. Um, I'm going to start off after I've showered and conditioned it. I always start off with the Goldwell Carousel Control. This is a rich protective oil and the bottle looks like this. And I put one pump of this in my hair every time I wash it. The next part um, to making my hair wavy or to wearing my hair wavy is to use just one product. That's all I use guys. The rest is the humidity on the island because my hair is naturally wavy. But the reason I don't often do it at home is because in Canada we don't get the humidity that they have in South Carolina. So although I might get a really nice wave to my hair, it's a lot more voluminous here, especially once I've spent some time outdoors. And that's when my hair really gets this beautiful wave to it. So I wish we had that in Canada, but sadly we don't. Sexy Hair, so it's by the Big Sexy Hair Company. This is their Healthy Sexy Hair with Mimosa Flower Extract and Moonstones. This is for air dry styling or this is an air dry styling mousse. The mousse and I end up doing two and a half pumps and I just rub this in my hands and again do the same thing that I had done with the oil and I rub it or run it through all sides and then I just start to scrunch or work it into my hair and kind of fluff up my roots because I find my roots are the area where my hair kind of falls flat, especially at home. Although it's been much easier, as I said, with the humidity here on the island. So before I do anything, I always put on my La Mer. This is the SPF 50 UV protecting fluid. Love this stuff. I find it goes on really nicely underneath my makeup. And again, doesn't alter the makeup or the way that the products perform, which is important because some SPFs are not like that. And because I have sunspots up here, um, I wear this all the time because um, dark spots can just become worse, obviously, if you're not protecting them with SPF every single day. And I have found since using this SPF and doing my skincare routine that I changed up over the past, mm, it's been like a month and a half, two months now, that it's been so much better. Like, it's been lightening slowly. You guys may not be able to see the difference, but I definitely have. So I've been thrilled with that. So if you guys want to see a skincare routine in future once I get home to see what I've been doing for myself, then let me know. Comment below. <laughs> this is their makeup primer. I absolutely love this stuff. It's nice and easy because you just spritz it on and off you go. And then once that is on, the foundation that I have been using while away that I've really been loving is the L'Oreal 24 Hour Foundation. This is their Infallible Pro Matte. I am color number 104 in golden beige. Now it may not match as I put it on now solely because I am, or I just applied Sorry Self Tanner. I've been using the Saint Tropez Purity Self Tanner, which, oh my God, if you guys haven't tried it, game changer. I'm going to take my Tarte Shape Tape and I'm gonna put a little bit of, of it on my dark spots, just cause I find they're not totally covered. And then I'm also going to put it under my eyes as per usual. Now the newer part to my routine that I wasn't doing, so this could be a bit of a gamble, is I was using the Max Pressed uh, Powder in NC20 to set my face. My dear hubby of mine was putting on some aloe in the bathroom and accidentally knocked my pressed powder all over the floor and it shattered into a million pieces. There wasn't really much of it left anyway, so it's not a total loss. So anyway, I went to uh, the local CVS here and I picked up the... L'Oreal Infallible Pro Matte Powder. Um, this is air fine texture apparently, 16 hour wear. This is color, I don't know, they don't say. I'm going to set my face with this. Again, I know my face is a different color than my neck right now. We're just gonna roll with it guys. Don't panic, everything 
will work out. Next I have an old school bronzer that I've been using for years and years that is broken, so we're just going to roll, oh the top's broken anyway, and that is the Annabelle Biggie Matte Bronzer, which looks like this. It's slightly more cool toned, which I actually don't mind when I have my fake tan on. I don't like the bronzers that get like too golden because I just, I don't know, just looks ends up looking muddy in my opinion. So this one has a bit of a cool and warm bronzer blend, which is what I really like about it. So I am just going to add that to my temples by just patting it in just slowly because I don't want to move the bronzer, or sorry, the foundation and powder that I just put on my face. So it's better just to tap it in. And I do the same along my cheekbones. And it's just to give a little bit of color and dimension, not anything too crazy. Anastasia Beverly Hills, the Soft Glam Palette. You guys had heard in a couple of my favorites videos how much I've been loving this palette. It is just beautiful, nice, easy neutrals that you can use to create just about any look under the sun, which is why I quite enjoy it. And realistically on vacation, because for most part I'm fairly no fuss, I like something that's just easy. I'm not going to spend a lot of time doing any crazy makeup looks. Not that I normally do. I don't really normally do it like nowadays anyway. Um, but yeah, I really, really enjoy this. My Sigma Tapered Blending Brush is the E40, and I'm going to dunk it into the color Orange Soda up top here. And then what I like to do, because I have a partially hooded eye, is I sweep it into my, um, just above my crease, because my crease is lower since I have a hooded eye, and I kind of like to put it in the socket of my eye. And I like to build the color. So some of this will vary depending on how much I want to fuss with on any given day. I'm going to put on a little bit more eyeshadow today solely because, again, Sean and I will be going out to dinner later tonight. And as I've always said to you guys, the key is just to blend. Like, take your time blending so that everything looks really nice and smooth and there's no harsh lines. And once that's done, I'm going to go in with another Sigma brush. This is the E25. And I'm going to dip into Burnt Orange, oops, which is right here, and also Sienna. I'm going to sort of start on the outer corner here and just pat on that little bit of color. Can you guys see that? And fluff that in towards the lash line. And then start bringing it up to the crease or that socket area again and then start fluffing it back and forth. Okay, next I'm going in with the Sigma Smudge Brush. It's this little teeny tiny one here. This is the E21. And I'm gonna go back in with the original burnt orange color, like this one right here. And I'm just going to put it along my lower lash line. And I'm just connecting it to what I've done up here on the side. I just find it always looks a little bit more natural rather than just stopping your eyeshadow up top. I always think it just personally, I think it looks a little bit more finished. That color's on. I go back in with the E25 brush that I used the two colors together with, and I just like to smudge under the eye just to make sure everything is blended and there are no harsh lines. Okay, now once that is done, I like to go in with mixing two shades again. I take on a smaller Sigma brush again. This is their E47 crease brush. I love this. This is like my favorite brush. And I go in with the color Rustic and Cypress Umber, and I just do one dunk in each. And I like to go in the same spot that I did with the Taper Blending Brush. So I kind of go on an angle here and just pat that darker color on, bringing it down to the lash line. And then with the tip, I sweep it into the crease as well. And I find it just defines the eye really nicely. Because I actually forgot a flat brush to put on some shadow in the middle, what I've been doing is just using my finger, my ring finger, and I've been going in with the color rose pink and I just dunk my finger in there and I've been popping it on my lid. That is an extra step which you certainly don't have to do, but I'm going to take this uh, tempera color which is up here and I'm going to dunk this really teeny tiny brush in. This is the Morphe 515. I like to personally just put it right under my brow bone. And on the inner corner of my eye. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just redefine my brows. I've been brutal lately with covering them with a bit of foundation. So I'm just, I don't have the proper tools here with me on vacation to kind of fluff over that or get rid of it. 
So I'm just going to trace lightly over with my Annabelle Universal Medium Brow Pencil. Get my brows back since I covered them. So once the eyes are semi-complete, what I like to do from there is go in with blush. So I've been using the Too Faced Love Hangover, uh, yeah, their Love Flush blushes. This is the color Love Hangover. This is one of their travel sizes that I picked up because again, I don't want a lot with me on vacation. So I just dunk a Sigma brush in there. This is their dual fiber powder blush brush. This is the F11, or sorry, F15, my apologies. And what I like to do is where I've got my bronzer kind of finishing, this is where I like to fluff on just a little bit of blush. I know some people don't always like to put blush on. I personally love the flush of color it provides. I just, especially if you're gonna put on foundation, I don't know, I feel like just personally for me, I don't feel like it looks finished without that little flush of color. I just prefer it. Once that's done, oh my gosh, guys, I have a new favorite highlighter. It's so bomb. I've been using the Becca uh, highlighter. This is the color Vanilla Quartz. Are you ready for this? Look at that. Oh, it's this, it's almost white. It's this very pearlescent sort of creamy color. It is beautiful. I love it both on the skin coloring I have right now with the tanner and also just when I'm completely fair. And um, I actually forgot my highlight brush. So I've been using a eyeshadow brush. This is the Sigma Taper Blending E35. And I've been dunking it in and just putting it lightly over top on my cheeks. You guys, can you see that? Ooh, I love it. So pretty, it's just so pretty. <laughs> For those of you that might be newer to my channel, some of you have been asking me about my long lashes. I've talked about this in Getting Ready With Me videos in past, but I use an eye serum called Eye Envy. That is what it looks like there. It is a Canadian-based brand. You can buy it online from wishboutique.ca, I believe. And um, for those of you that are in the US anyway. And I just swipe it along my lash line. Um, I've been using this stuff for over a year now. And that's all I've been doing with my lashes. Now I only put the serum on like once every three days or so and it's kept the length of them. Back in with my L'Oreal Lash Primer. You guys know this is the stuff dreams are made of for me. Like I just love it. And then once the lash primer's on, I'm going in with my fave mascara, the L'Oreal Voluminous. This is an, an oldie but a goodie. I use the color Black is Black. And I'm gonna go in with that on my lashes. Annabelle Self Sharpening Eyeliner. I love that it's self sharpening and I don't have to carry around a sharpener everywhere. And this one's also waterproof so it doesn't smudge, it doesn't go belong, like below my eye or transfer, which I love. And recently, normally I've been putting it around my eye but I know some of you have been commenting saying that I shouldn't. So I've been trying it. And um, I've just been putting it under my tight line, which is under my upper lash line. I have not been putting it on the lower lash line because so many of you have been complaining that you feel like it or not complaining I shouldn't say that that's the wrong word you've been suggesting that it makes my eye look smaller when I put the liner on my lower water line I know it technically does I personally like the look of it but for the sake of the video so you guys can finally see what that looks like I'm going to leave it as this <laughs> but what I've been doing to compensate for that for not putting liner under there is I have been taking that small tapered uh, smudge brush that I showed you initially and I've been taking a little bit of mulberry, this like red color, and I've just been putting that and smudging it under the lower lash line with the original color just to give a teeny bit more depth. And then once that's done, I'm going to put on lipstick. Now lipstick's been a huge one that you guys have been asking me about. So I kind of use the same things over and over again. Recently, my go-to lipstick, at least on the island anyway, has been the Sigma. This is their Power Stick lipstick in the color Nancy. I love it because it's this really beautiful uh, pink. So I put this on first. Now once that's on, I do my favorite part, which is put this uh, lip topper. This is Skinny Dip by Jouer. It is this really beautiful sort of gold reflect color. I do just to give the appearance of fuller plumper lips. I mean, my lips are pretty full anyway, but just to amplify that is I put a little bit in the center. And then once that's on there, I then go in with a very well-loved MAC lip gloss. This is actually, I think it was from the Mariah Carey collection. Yeah, dream lover. But I mean, any kind of clear type of glass will do. This one has a little bit of reflect in it as well. And I put it on top. 
And then again, in teeny tiny form, I have the makeup, um, or sorry, Scandinavia makeup setting spray. Again, I bought a little teeny tiny one. That they often give these ones away when you purchase their setting sprays. I don't know why they just give you a travel size. So I love it. So again, less stuff to bring. It's not as big. And I spritz, oops, this everywhere. And that is it guys for my makeup look. I know my hair is not quite done. I will do another shot to show you everything once it's finished because I know some of you wanted to see my hair just dry the way that it is, but this is at least the makeup. And again, like, isn't this lipstick color beautiful? Mm. I mean, really, I just love it. <laughs> okay guys, so it's been about an hour and I just wanted to show you that my hair is fully dry now. So this is just what it does while I'm on vacates. It's natural wave with that little bit of product that I showed you guys. Um, what I end up doing, because I end up getting more volume the longer I wear my hair wavy, because I still only wash it every couple of days, is every time I go to the bathroom and wash my hands, instead of drying it on the towels, I will just scrunch my hair like so, and it constantly gives it more volume. And then as I said, just the humidity, the salty sea air, and me just damping my hair like first thing in the morning without brushing it again, just adds more texture as the days go on. I don't even have the need to put my hair back in a top knot as like I'm on third day hair. And then I end up washing it again. So super easy for vacay, for vacay wear. <laughs> anyway guys, that finishes off the getting ready with me island vacay edition. Um, I will have another video up very soon on all of my vacation outfits so you guys can see everything. And if any of you want to learn how to style yourselves from moi directly, if you want to learn from me, then make sure you register for my online course, how to create your personal style. The registration for it closes on June 10th, but I will be coaching you personally the entire way through this eight week online course. It is so in depth. If you want all of my style knowledge, for yourself and how to translate that into your closet, into your shopping, into a look that is authentically you, then you don't want to miss this course. I will leave the link for that down below for any of you that want to check it out. And other than that, my style angels, I love you to the moon and back, and I will see you guys again very soon. Mwah. See ya.